everybody. Well, look, you know, I think even, you know, for people. <laughs> and, cracking up. How'd you get that code for John Walsh? <laughs> well, he's the guy on Larry King whose yeah, son died who sometimes to, laughs. I didn't want to say the guy's name. Right. No, yeah. I mean, well, no, I think what happens yeah, but you is. you can still laugh after you. Right. I, I mean. I think if you, you suffer. Know, Bill tr- Cosby had a, had, a, had a son that was killed. And, and he still performs stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how he does it, but. No, but I think that if that happens. But Tim was saying my life would be over. I don't think your life is over. I just think once in a while you're sad because you're like having a party, you're having a good time. You're like, ah, I forgot my dead kid. <laughs> and then you get sad. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you, because I don't think your mind can can you know, always be in one. But if you had a young right. child that died, yeah. Well, I, I I'm, I'm being picky. No, I'm, I'm be kind sad. of being serious. You go like I, I wish I hadn't outlived my well, sixteen gu- year old. There, there's guilt. Like yeah. what? Well, no, but see, the, what Norm's saying is, and and this is uh, this is true. Whenever you have like a kid, like let's say you have a nine year old kid, right? Right. And that kid has been invited to uh, birthday parties for nine years of his friends and everything like that. And and a lot of people are invited to parties because their kids are friends. You know, the adults, you know, don't socialize, but the kids do. So I, what ha- I, if I, something I, happens to that kid, you're no longer invited to any of those parties in that circle because you're you're like the downer. I know. I mean, you're like, and and they don't want to they don't want to abuse you right. by inviting you. And you see all these kids buzzing around. You're like, oh boy. Right? That happened to Tommy Lee actually. He. He had a party, and you know, a, a child died. Yeah, I knew the That's guy true. whose uh, kid died. Oh, I mean, yeah, and I knew the uh, producer. So who obviously, died. he's not getting invites from Tommy Lee anymore. Anyway. Well, I, I think he sued Tommy Lee, didn't he? Yeah, there was, was some sort of lawsuit, lawsuit over that, yeah. as I recall. I guess there was really nothing. Like, all right, it's light Friday around here, everybody. <laughs> it's Welcome sad, to uh, Norm yeah. McDonald and Sam Simon. First they're we both did with brain us. cancer. Yeah, and they're then both we did with us. Children not being outlived by their parents. Well, you have one child. Right. Do you ever feel like it would be easier if you had ten? Well, you mean backups? One, no, I'm saying if one went missing. Nah. Nine, well, then what, the other nine could look for him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one is like, he gets the whole ball of wax. Yeah, you know? no, it's easier to have uh, one kid. You have uh, maybe two. You're putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to live uh, your whole life, uh, you know, in fear of everything? But on the other hand, if you have ten children... The odds of something horrific will happen higher, to one yeah. of them during your life is pretty big. Yeah, but right? then again, I don't know if you can love all ten kids as much as you can love just the one. No, I agree with you. Oh, yeah. I think you can. Uh, what? Yeah. You don't have enough love to go around. No, sure. Uh, parents of mo- you mean parents of multiple kids don't love their kids as much as you love your daughter? Mm. Or, or or not? You have to no, no. If you have six I, kids, no, because if you have one child, right? Right. Can, it gets all the you, attention. It gets all the attention. Now, what if you have ten? Right. Is it right. possible? What if you have a thousand? Well, you think attention is love? Do you think if you oh, had a stand up comedian? Do you think if you had a thousand children, <laughs> got... it would be possible to love them all? Well, no, you couldn't I wouldn't even know. You them wouldn't have all. any time. Well, right. We've got to take a break though. here. Norm McDonald and Sam Simon are with us. It's Conway and Whitman live on 97.1 Free FM. I'm talking about two or three, though. <laughs> Verse. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway Whitman Show live at 97.1 Free FM. Sam Simon and Norm, McJo- Mor- Norm McDonald join us here on uh, this Friday evening. And before the break, we were talking about if you had six kids, could you love them as much as you love one kid? And I don't think it's possible. I don't think you have. I think you have favorites. Um, and I think even when you have two kids, I think you have a favorite. Uh, I, I don't know if, if, if you agree or not, but I think that... Um, you know that you you probably may have been your dad's favorite or your mom's favorite. No, I definitely believe. I and my parents have passed away, but I absolutely believe that my mom and dad uh, have loved my brother and me. Absolutely, exactly the same. Absolutely the same. And and I and I think I think that there are qualities about both of us that were special to say my mom or my dad. There's right. something about my brother that was special to them that. And something about me, maybe that was the special voices. to them. Yeah, sure. The impressions they got, they love those. But uh, <laughs> no, I think that uh, Brian do Cronkite, Brian. We love that. <laughs> what the other guy do? No, he, no impression. Juggled. He, he. My dad and my mom always made it very clear that they loved us the same. And I. Well, what about dogs? You got three dogs. Love them all the same. All the D- same. Don't even try. Is that right? Love them all the same. Wow. See, I don't know. If I, if I had six kids, I definitely would have a favorite. Now there's now there's special things about them. Right, I have spe- like the you know the oldest, the first. But it feels one. like a Sophie's choice. I mean, you got You're moving into an old folks' home. Take me, and you can keep two of dogs. Nope. You- 
You couldn't nope. make that decision? You could take me instead of... Is that right? Absolutely. absolutely. Mm. Oh, that's funny, because I would never take me over anyone. <laughs> You're talking about a dog. Like even my son. Or... What about a dog? <laughs> oh, a dog. He's talking about dogs. No, I'm saying... A dog? No, I'm, <laughs> say... <laughs> no, I'm saying that Tim is... At... I think what Tim is, what he said, Sophie's Troy, so I think you're asking me, if somebody said to me, you've got to choose one or two of your dogs, right? because we're going to take the other or the other's going to be killed or something right. like that, I would absolutely plead with them to to kill me and leave the dogs. Is no, that right? Oh, he would. Right? Yes, he would. I, I absolutely would. Yeah, he would. I absolutely would. Yeah. Now, now, Norm, if if it was you or your, that or your son, would you plead to the killers to take your son? I wouldn't <laughs> plead with him. I'd say anybody but me. Anybody yeah, including your me. son. Yeah, because because the thing is, if um, you if your son dies, it would be horrible, you know. Right. Like you say, your life would be over. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it wouldn't really be over if they took you. It would be over for yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> you know, and also I would have to put my son through that. But you know, it's it's interesting, and I don't I don't want to say well, anything. You put your son through hell anyway, though. Right. Huh? No, he's dead. He's well, he's, that's true. All right. All right. How about this? But, I mean, I wouldn't be. It would be an easy decision, but it certainly wouldn't be. Uh, I would certainly be plagued with uh, oh guilt, yeah, guilt and for remorse. Months. Sure. I am not following this. You're saying you would, you would have your son killed. Yeah, because I believe there's nothing more precious than life. <laughs> than your life. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk to a Matt in San Diego. You guys oh got headphones God. over there. All right. Hey, how's it going? Matt, he thanks would... for holding on. Matt, Matt, we'll talk to Matt. Go ahead. You hey, can put your uh, headphones the great Norm on. Norm McDonald, how's, how's it going, brother? Hey, hey. what's up, Matt? Hey, I just want to know when uh, when Dirty Work 2 is coming out. Uh, Dirty Work 2, well, that's... Oh, my God. I is it too be... loud? Yeah, yeah really no. loud. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> in a landline. Right up, here, or right up there. No, I got it, man. It's yeah, this there. Was it that one? It might be this one. There you go. All right. Yeah. Is Matt still there? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, Dirty Work uh, 2 is like, I don't know, because it's still in pre-production. Uh, Sam's supposed to have the the second draft finished like I'm this I'm still week. working on uh, Norm's notes from the last draft. But, okay. Well, hey, I'm going to give you a quote. Let me see if uh, you can place it. Okay. Okay. And uh, here, here's my sorry impression of uh, the great Norm MacDonald. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know... A date rapist has to have a lot of more charm than a regular rapist. <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is, too. Uh -oh. Yeah, you know, because, uh, you know, that Artie Lang, he's uh, <laughs> he's no longer a baby gorilla. He's a big gorilla now. <laughs> oh, we were talking uh, about that. All right, that's thanks, what, man. Thanks for calling. So. Jesus. Oh, terrible. Glad I took his call. <laughs> Norm's co-star, Artie Lang in Dirty Work, one reviewer said that Artie had all the charm of a date rapist. Right. <laughs> And so Norm cheered Artie up by saying, "Well, the, the date rapist has to have enormous charm, as opposed to a regular rapist." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no, a date rapist, a date rape is he has to he spends more time and money. Yeah, well, you have to get a date. You have to charm them into your right. uh, apartment. He's in right. many ways smarter. Yeah. Well, he's you know what he's more patient. It's funny that you said that a real rapist. Yeah, I mean, like a real. Well, date rape, a I don't simple know. rape. I mean, you know. Uh, no, it is completely different. Yeah, it really is uh, different. Um, Less of a stigma with date rape than, you know, back alley rapist? No, it's a different motive, I think, you know. Like, yeah, well, it's, sometimes it's, it's a misunderstanding or whatever it is, hormones. Yeah, somebody but, you know, that's different and, than stalking a person and breaking in and raping a 75 year old woman. Yeah. Like, a, like a 75 year old woman rarely gets date raped. <laughs> well, she's going to, she has to depend upon the regular. She, Traditional she, rape. Yeah, I mean, if she, it's going to happen, I never have heard that before in my life. <laughs> like, you like she's not, she's not been taken to Nate Nails and kind of right. charmed by some old bingo dude. and then wacko. There's some really weird ideas bouncing around this well, room. It's Friday, you know, the world's coming to an end. All right, it's uh, Conway and Women, Sam Nate Simon, now. and Norm McDonald are with us. <laughs> We're live on 97.1 Free FM.